it's um, it's a real honor to be here today to talk about what I believe is the most important topic of our time. Um, the title of my talk, Transhumanism, the Endgame, probably gives away um, <laughs> my take on the matter. I'm not going to get into the technical aspects of transhumanism, though I do believe that one of the problems with faith with regards to public understanding of the matter is that it encompasses such a wide range of things. Um, and we've seen some of them, but from genetic engineering, implant technology, artificial intelligence, nanotechnology, all the way to cybernetic prosthetics. Um, although all of these things fall under the transhumanist label, I think there's a very important distinction to be made between technology that seeks to assist people with a disability in order to regain a normal quality of life, and technology that seeks to transform us entirely. Um, the focus of my talk today will be on the ultimate transhumanist goal, what has been termed by Ray Kurzweil, one of the leaders of the movement, as the singularity. In his book titled The Singularity is Near, When Humans Transcend Biology, he writes, there will be no distinction post-singularity between human and machine, or between physical and virtual reality. It's very important to understand that transhumanism is simply the transitional stage between humanism and post-humanism. Make no mistake, the final goal is to eradicate humanity as we know it. Once you understand the final destination, it becomes much easier to look back and identify the psychological conditioning, the biological tampering, the cultural grooming and the educational prepping that we have been subjected to for decades in preparation to making us accept a post-human future. It takes a lot of physical and psychological abuse to get an intelligent species like ours to agree to its own extinction. Most, if not all, that has transcended in the last 60 years was designed to get us closer to accepting such a dystopian reality. Whether you care to accept it or not, we live in a hyper-controlled matrix where our perception of reality is meticulously planned, managed, and executed in order to control and steer us in whichever direction they wish. And the direction is a post-human world. For this, they first needed to destabilize, dehumanize, and demoralize humanity through every means possible. The destruction of the nuclear family, children being indoctrinated by the state, abortion, the eradication of God and spirituality from education, life in mega cities and away from nature, toxic food, air and water, social media, replacing real human connection and interaction, engineered financial crisis and taxation, endless wars and massive migration, stress, anxiety, depression, drugs and alcohol, constant fear-mongering, moral relativism as the new religion, and I could go on and on about how humanity has been influenced and forced to move away from all the things that give us strength, security, purpose, and meaning. A weak, immoral, disconnected, ignorant, and unhealthy population is an easy target for the next stage, the creation of an entire generation of androgynous beings. Masculinity is under attack psychologically, culturally, and biologically. Women are being replaced in sports, entertainment, and politics by men pretending to be women. And children are being indoctrinated at school to think that gender is a choice. The transgender movement is not a grassroots movement. It comes from the top. It has nothing to do with people's freedom of expression, sexuality, or civil rights. It's an evil psyop to, with a clear agenda to get us closer to transhumanism by making us question the most fundamental notion of human identity, our gender. If you don't know who you are, 
If you already identify as a hybrid between a man and a woman, you will be easily convinced to become a hybrid between human and machine. Gender ideology is the two plus two equals five from George Orwell's 1984 dystopian novel. It's the final test to see whether we will follow the most absurd party line towards our own extinction. But two plus two equals four. And no matter how you choose to dress, call yourself, or change your physique, will not change that. The sad reality, though, is that in the gaslighting process to get us closer to a post-human future, they have mentally and physically harmed an increasing number of children and young people, and it's only getting worse. This must be stopped. Understanding the philosophy and the ideology behind the transhumanist movement is crucial if we're going to make the right choices as a species. Transhumanism stands on the premise that there is no God, that there is no spiritual realm, and that we possess no soul. Does anybody feel like a soulless being in this room? It is the most um, materialistic and Darwinian understanding of who we are. We have been prepped and groomed to accept the notion that without technological enhancements, we will not survive the future, but instead become obsolete. Yuval Noah Harari is doing a marvelous job at convincing everyone that we will become what he calls the useless class in the face of a world driven by AI, that we are simple, hackable animals restricted by our own biology. But the truth, however, is very, very different. They don't want to alter us because we are flawed, weak, and limited. They want to alter us because we are none of those things. And it's increasingly difficult to control the billions of resourceful, resilient, and creative humans that we are. There is a reason why it's called artificial intelligence. And that's because it is artificial. It's not real intelligence. Real intelligence necessitates of consciousness, something that machines will never possess. And in any case, who said we wanted to merge with machines? Why should we allow some megalomaniac nerds and their big tech billionaire friends dictate our future? I think most people just want to be able to live a peaceful life in a healthy environment where they can pursue their dreams. Technology must be at our service, not to replace us or destroy us. Give us free energy, and the world will transform instantly. Give us nutritious food, clean air and water, and disease will be eradicated. Allow us to live in a humane system instead of a free-range tax farm, and you will see how depression, anxiety, and stress dissipates. Let's... Let's, let's use technology to make our lives more humane, not to make humans a thing of the past. The things we value most are those things that cannot be replicated by, by machines. Empathy, compassion, courage, intuition, imagination, passion, love, all of the things that make us unique. We are the most sophisticated beings on this planet and possibly the universe, for all we know. Our body is a universe in itself, one that we still have not yet fully discovered. And our brains are the most complex cognitive piece of biological machinery in the world. Just to give you a sense of our brain power, in 2013, joint teams of researchers from Japan and Germany got together to simulate a single second of human brain activity. They created an artificial neural network of 1.73 billion nerve cells connected by 10.4 trillion synapses. Sounds very impressive, but actually it's only a fraction of every human being's uh, nerve cells. Scientists believe we all carry between 80 and 100 billion nerve cells, or about as many stars, in the Milky Way. 
the researchers were actually not able to simulate the human's brain activity in real time. And it took 40 minutes with a combined muscle of 82,944 processes to get just one second of biological brain processing time. But they want to think, they want to make you think you're useless. They don't want to make you better. They don't want to make you a superhuman. The end game is to make you a totally controllable piece of machinery. Another thing in the internet of things. As Klaus Schwab has said on numerous occasions, the fourth industrial revolution will not change the world. It will change you. They will entice you with promises of immortality, but it's digital immortality. They will try to convince you of a life without disease and suffering, but by disconnecting you from the natural web of life and connecting you to the grid. And they will speak of becoming gods, homo deus, in the words of Mr. Harari. Well, we once took a bite of that apple, and we fell. And we've been falling ever since. But I think... We now have a chance to redeem ourselves. We now have a chance to change our ways, to understand our foolishness, to see where we went wrong, a chance to walk in the right direction with appreciation, with humility, with courage, with truth, with faith, and with love. Let's not take this chance to transform ourselves to something different, but to become the best version of ourselves. We are not here to become God. We are here for God to experience life through us. Thank you.